<laughs> okay. Welcome to the Troy Planning Commission meeting for March 25th, 2015. We are now in session. Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers. Here. Mayor. Here. Mrs. Mahan. Here. Mr. Forrest. Here. Mr. McGarry. Here. Mrs. Johnson. Here. Mr. Titterington. Here. All members are present. First matter to come before the commission is the approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was on March 11, 2015. Do any of the commission members have any changes, additions, or deletions to those minutes? Move for approval. Is the motion to approve? Is there support for the motion? Second. Uh, there's a second by Mrs. Mahan. Nobody. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, they are accepted. Next matter on the agenda is a rezoning request. Parting lot 6047, does staff have a report? Uh, yes, we do, but I don't know if you want to remove it from the table first. Yeah, we have to do that. <laughs> Move uh, to remove it from the table. There's a motion to remove it from the table by Mr. Turrington. Is there a second? Motion or second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's now back on the table. All <laughs> the table. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a uh, staff report. Um, as you know, at the last two planning commission meetings, um, a request was heard regarding the senior living facility as a planned development on Town Park Drive. Um, I won't go through all that since we've already spent two meetings on it. Um, we've kind of narrowed it down to, to two issues. Uh, one is the protective covenants or restrictions, and the other one is a, uh, a traffic study. So we'll start with the protective covenants or restrictions. Um, I thought we would just go through this. Um, I put it up on the screen. I didn't know how you wanted it to be just to go down um, through the recitals and the purpose. and or we can start with um, any comments you guys have however the chair wants me to proceed well uh, if all the commissioners have had the opportunity to review them and they've had the opportunity whether or not they reviewed them or not I don't know but uh, if anyone has any questions or comments why don't we entertain those now hearing none I'm going to get started <laughs> first of all protect the covenants restrictions uh, this is not an agreement with the city of Troy uh, it's incorporated into a document that uh, becomes a declaration by the owner that says, okay, my property, which I now own or will own, and these will then be incorporated into my deed reference, are incorporated into this property, and the city of Troy need not, need not be a signatory party to the agreement. Uh, so that's the first change I, I would uh, suggest that they make. In the purpose clause, uh, the use of any portion of the property shall at all times conform to the applicable zoning ordinances. Um, are we concerned about them being uh, also a subdivision ordinances or any of the other ordinances? Why don't we just take out the wood zoning so that, uh, that they will at all times conform to the applicable ordinances of the city of Troy? Um, the next question I had on the standards, are these taken right out of our subdivision regulations? Um, zoning code, yes. Zoning they meet, they meet the requirements, yes. Okay. Um, the next question I had was on the construction and the construction materials. Uh, it says four attractive sides of high quality rather than creating a front elevation of significantly different materials from side and rear elevations. I'd like to see something in there that's more specific, uh, whether it be 80% stone, 70% brick, 5% vinyl, wood veneer, whatever it is. Uh, I would think that we would want to make sure that at this stage in time, if we approve a plan unit development, we know what the heck we're getting. Okay. And uh, I think the construction materials are important. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Tim, did we not have three examples at the last meeting, three, seven, three different elevations? Would it be appropriate to specify which elevation that we want? As part of that, would that be specific enough, or do we? What? A, want any no, more? Sorry. Well, as I far would, as I'm concerned, as far as these, the one, two, three, I would like to see those within the ordinance themselves, uh, whether it's an attachment uh, to the ordinance or, uh, you know, if you take a look at a, a map, excuse me, a picture like that, we don't know what the elevation exactly is. Is it 17 feet high of brick and stone? Mm -hmm. with three feet of vinyl on a 20-foot building or what you know if you put in the ordinance the fact that it's the front has to be 70 percent of stone or 70 percent of brick or something along those lines at least we can go out and measure mm -hmm. one, yeah, of the, oh, one of the one of the things i was going to bring up is under d building material i did talk to mark murphy about that um whether having the option and they were actually for the, the stone option as well um that would be elevation c 
be elevation C, and so I thought maybe if we could adopt that, the prototype, um, as yes. exhibit, or attach it to this and say as exhibit A, or with option some, C and exhibit A, then we would actually have that incorporated into the covenant. And okay. that would be fine okay. with, if it's amended to say, and it has to have a percentage of stone on the facing. Okay. And whatever that percentage is, if it happens to be 70%, that's fine, put it in the ordinance. That way, if something happens that they put 60% on, we can go ahead and hold the feet of the fire and put the other 10% up. Okay. In paragraph D, uh, it talks about, in the, in the second sentence, all major equipment, including but not limited to air conditioning equipment, heating equipment, electrical transformers, shall be screened from view with material consistent with the building material. Um, should we not also put in there dumpsters? I, yeah, I, I know we have a, a provision for trash and waste and refuge in the next paragraph, but it just seems like we're, we're omitting something that we do want to go ahead and have covered. Okay. You, we, can, we can include that in there if you'd like. I don't think Mark would have any objections okay. to that. And when we get down to waste and refuse in that next paragraph, I'd like to add at the end that and shall be kept in clean and sanitary condition. Okay. When we're talking about dumpsters and trash containers. Now, I'm just continuing here. Does anybody else have any comments up to this point? Your Honorable? If not, I'll keep going. Paragraph G. No outdoor storage shall be permitted except for minimal amount of storage which shall be permitted in the carports. Define minimal for me. Because it, um, it's not in here, and I don't think whatever definition you can give me will satisfy <laughs> me. But I need to have some sort of definition as to what minimal is. Is it going to be a square footage? How much square foot? You know, their minimal might be 100 square feet, our minimal might be 20 square feet. So I need to know what that is. Okay. You okay? Yes. H, fence. Uh, a lot of the determination as to um, what fences might be attractive on the property is, is linked to chain link fences, which they have prohibited. That's good. There is a sentence in here that says that metal fencing shall be prohibited. Notwithstanding the foregoing, owner shall be permitted to install a fence around the detention pond in the event one is required. But it doesn't say what materials. I had uh, spoken with uh, Mark about that, and he was recommending that we install the word wrought iron. And um, we could even cross out, I guess, metal fencing shall be prohibited. But he wanted to put owner shall be permitted to install a wrought iron fence around the detention pond in the event. Um, I'd like that. Okay. Okay, paragraph J, permitted uses. No more than 40% of the property shall be used for retail uses, which include but not limited to retail store, cafe, bistro, et cetera. I think I know where they're coming from, that they want to have those things inside the retirement community, right. and that makes a lot of sense. This language doesn't do it, however. This language says that they would go ahead and use a bistro for public consumption if they want to. Right. So if they want to go ahead and continue with that language, that's fine, but there should be something added at the end that says, to be used only by the residents and their families. Okay. No, not friends. <laughs> I don't want you to go get your hair cut there. Um, there. There's also a whole scheme of other things that aren't addressed in these restrictions, and I'm just going to throw them out there. And I'd like to hear from some of the other commission members as to whether or not they believe we ought to be addressing those at this stage. Uh, amenities, walking trails, benches. In the um, other PUDs which we've done, we have required certain amenities, uh, and, and one of them is, is walking trails, and I think they indicated that there would be some sidewalks or something around this one. There is a sidewalk. In addition to the brick sidewalk that connects it to the neighborhoods, they have an additional sidewalk around their facility okay, there's for the patrons. there's nothing in here saying that there will be one. It's actually on the site plan. It was in the report that was uh, presented two meetings ago. Okay. The site plan, is that going to be part of the legislation? Uh, yes. and, is it, and is it going to say that? We will make sure that the site plan is included in the declaration. So and, on the the site, and the sidewalks and parking layout will be as set forth in the exhibit? As shown, yes. Okay. Are we concerned about stormwater detention? Um, that, would, that would fall under the caveat of uh, have to follow all the ordinances. 
right. instruct they, the zoning ordinance. They placed um, K, which is code compliance, in there because that will be um, that will be required when they do submit their building plans um, at that time. We do have a um, uh, the development already has a built-in detention area, and then if we wanted to request an extra one, which is why they put that fencing language in there, because we may be requesting that on the site if need be. Um, our early projections indicate from our engineering team that one won't be needed, that the development will actually be sufficient, uh, but just in case we wanted to throw that language in there. The reason I bring that up is that on other PUDs, what we have adopted is additional language indicating that for any stormwater detention areas that the city has given an easement, for the purpose of ingress and egress so that we can, but don't have to, clean out the stormwater detention basin. And that we have to, because the owner isn't doing it, then we have the right to go ahead and charge that. But that needs to be taken care of in advance because it's an easement that will be granted into that durations. Okay. We can, re we can request that. If they don't have one on their property, we actually already have that through the TIF. Um, is my understanding. Is that right, Mr. Kolodesh? That's correct. But if they wanted to have one in there, I guess we can put in here that we can add an I talking about any easements being required. You're saying we have to do that ahead of time. Could we do that at the uh, at the building plan review time and have them come back to council should that be required? I would imagine that'd be acceptable. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to tick a couple things off, and you tell me whether or not I'm all wet. Do we need an agreement in this document indicating that there is an agreement not to subdivide the property any further? Um, I think if they want to subdivide the property, it would have to it would violate the covenants and restrictions of this, especially with permitted uses. So they'd have to come back because that would be considered a major change well, to the plan development. Right. It would. Yeah. It would have so, to go back and for for us and council because it would be a change to the PD. Correct. Well, there's nothing in the. We have that in the zoning code. It talks the in the zoning code. It specifically talks gotcha. about subdivision, right. so that would be covered under that section. Yeah. How about any restrictions concerning signs, fuel containers, statements that utilities have to be underground, anything like that? Um, they they put that code compliance in there because they didn't they don't have their sign plans, but they would be required to follow it um, as the B two district in the um, zoning code that would be required. So mm -hmm. just as any other development that goes out there, they would be required to uphold those standards. And do our current under standards our current require the utilities to be underground? Uh, they do not. Re our current standards here. I don't think our utilities required to be underground. What other utilities would be required to be? Well, let people tell telephone, I mean, telephone poles. Let's get rid of the telephone poles. You know, sometimes we have PUDs that we require that utilities all be underground for the purpose of, uh, you know, high pollution. I guess we want to require that we could. We could throw something in there. This would be the place where we would require it if that's what we want to do. Okay. Is that a restriction in the TIF already? Yeah. Isn't it? I don't believe that's a restriction in the TIF. I don't, I don't think we have. Everything goes underground right now in the TIF. It is underground. I mean, if we want to throw under I and talk about utilities and put, and put something in there, we can certainly run an I. I'd like to see the. You mean an L? An L. An L. An L, sorry. <laughs> Look at the facade. Utilities would be underground. Um, I guess I'm not concerned about any outbuildings or other detached structures because the ordinance will set forth correct requirements for that. What the location of the buildings are on the plat plan. Okay. And those would be considered accessory, and if they're not on the site plan. They're not allowed. Correct. Okay. Are we concerned about the maintenance and upkeep of the sidewalk on the exterior, not the ones we're putting in, but the exterior sidewalk? Whose that, responsibility is that? It would be the owner's responsibility for that. And where is that indicated? It's in our, um, it's, it's in our code, code okay. requirements now. Right. How about a prohibition on vehicle storage, like RVs, uh, house trailers, the campers, things like that? This is a large tract of land. They're going to have parking. Uh, I don't know that RVs are conducive to senior citizens living, but do we need to have a prohibition in our declarations for that? 
I wouldn't think so. We do have requirements in the zoning code that talks about RV parking and uh, large equipment as well. I'd already addressed that in the zoning code. We would just make them follow those same requirements, the same as the other developments would have to. Well, why, why don't we put one in just like we do with underground utilities, another statement indicating that okay. uh, vehicle storage, including our, including but not limited to house trailers, RVs, uh, campers, et cetera, are prohibited. Likewise, and, and a lot of this is a lot of nitpicking, uh, but at the same time, that's what PUDs are all about. Uh, do we want to go ahead and restrict or le legislate concerning any solar panels, flagpoles, <coughs> TV dishes, antennas, things like that? I don't know. I mean, if, you, if you're comfortable putting that in there, we're certainly adding these. We could add language to that if you'd like. Um, once again, it's I would just fall to back me, to what, it's up to us. Yeah. So I don't know what you guys are feeling about any of these things that I've been talking about. I would think anything that they do after the site plan, if they were to add those kind of things, that would still have to come back. Yeah, they have to meet our code requirements. Yeah. Um, anything that's not specifically mentioned in the covenants would be required to meet our codes, is what they're basically saying in, in K. So we do have provisions on those, uh, the same as we do with sheds and things of that nature. Yeah, but. but I think to Alice's point, he <laughs> wants to know if you guys want to specifically put this in the covenants. What right. what specific language would you like to see in it? Well, just that uh, there are certain things that are prohibited in this BUD. Solar panels, uh, TV dishes, antennas, uh, swimming pool poles, um, clotheslines, things of that nature. We have required that those be put into our PUDs elsewhere in the city. But wouldn't they, if they didn't put in the site plan, and we're approving the site plan as part of the covenants, wouldn't they, by their own rules, not be allowed to put those in because it's not shown on the site plan? If they wanted to include that, wouldn't they have to come back before the council and the planning commission as a major change? Closed lines are major changes? No, but swim pools and things of that right. nature. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why even put ourselves through that if we can just put a, a two-sentence paragraph in the restrictions indicating that these items are prohibited? Okay. I was just trying to get it that way. Everybody knows that we're all on the same page. Okay. That's all I had. As if that's not enough. Uh, the, and we had talked before the meeting a little bit, Tim, that we need to make sure that the site plan, including the parking layout, the location of the buildings, and things of that nature, are incorporated into the restricted covenants as a part of the ordinance. Correct. Okay. Now, I've been rambling. Does anybody have any, no, don't laugh, Dee. Does anybody have any additional suggestions, additions, deletions, comments, disagreements on anything that I just spoke to? Tim, uh, the covenants that are up there and what we see in print, these are covenants that uh, have been approved in other situations, other developments? Um, I think what the developer tried to do is mock the uh, subdivision of the covenant from the, the gym subdivision, uh, just located on Prime Court, just down the street. Um, I think that's where they got the basis in the, in the meat of it. Um, certainly didn't address all the concerns that were brought up here, but um, if we can add those to it, I'm sure we could do that. The, the one concern I had is that the city of Troy has at least some input or control over um, a, anything different, uh, and that would be through our zoning ordinances, correct? I mean, that was a concern of me, that uh, from my personal, I'm in favor of the program, the, the development. I, I've uh, had a chance to see the one in Frankenmuth, and uh, I think it would be a good accent uh, to that area. It also has great potential as we try to develop the TIF uh, with other different kinds of businesses. I think it has great potential for us. So I'll be honest with you, I, I, I think my questions have been answered uh, to the point where I feel comfortable with it and with, uh, with the covenants that you have in place. Um, if there are some tweaks, fine. Uh, I, 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 uh, I'll just tell you right up front, I think it's a great opportunity for us in an area that we need to develop. 
Uh, I think it has great potential for future development because of that development itself. Uh, I was really, really concerned with the safety issue, uh, and that was more in the uh, how much traffic we would end up. And I, uh, in discussing that, I, I think uh, that's not as as mi more minimal than I thought it was going to be. That's my opinion. So. Uh, We'll, we'll talk about next, but that's how I feel. Any more comments about the restrictions? Question for Tim, since you've been talking to Mr. Murphy, um, I, it sounds like a lot, a lot of the, the concerns and changes, you've already talked to him and he's amenable to making those. Do you see anything on this list that he might want some further clarification on? I don't think there's much on the list he, he would have any issues with, um, so that because I don't think they're expecting to do most of the things that we're going to be putting on there. Um, I did talk to him on Friday and uh, yesterday uh, regarding maybe some of the concerns that would we have, and he was certainly open to any um, language modification that could be made. So I can certainly take uh, this stuff back to him, or if approval is made with the conditions that he approves it, we can certainly work that out. Okay, and, it, and it's important to note, Mr. Chair, that uh, Mr. Murphy is out of state. He's on the West Coast. Um, if if he had really needed to be here, he has representation here. Uh, I think he could have made it, but he does have other conflicts, and it's a pretty long plane ride. So. No problem. Okay, that was the, uh, the first phase. Apparently, there's no additional comments concerning the declarations. The second phase was the traffic impact study. Do you Correct. Have a report on that? Uh, yes, I do. Um, instead of me trying to cipher through this report, the author of the report um, is actually here. It's of Oaks Construction. It's uh, Richard Oaks and his son Jason. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it would be uh, probably easier for the commission if they came up and went through and explained the traffic study other than myself trying to interpret it for you. Mr. or Mr. Oaks, would you come forward and? Please state your name and address. My name is Richard Oaks, uh, Oaks Engineering at uh, 1459, 1397 Jackson Road, Bend, Ohio. Uh, and uh, my son Jason is here if we get into any of the modeling that uh, we put together sort of at the last minute. Um, just as a point of reference, since I only know a couple of you, uh, personal note, Jill has already heard this. I was born on Stanfield Road just east of Washington Pike in the little farmhouse. <laughs> and in 2003, uh, Oaks Engineering is the one that fixed the traffic circle downtown the way it's currently operating. <laughs> and I just came across an old newspaper clipping that they dated 2003 where the police chief had indicated that the traffic accidents had dropped 30% or something like that in a very short period of time. Uh, to that end, um, uh, we were contacted to uh, perform the, uh, I really want to call it a traffic impact study. I chose that word very carefully. I think I called it a traffic analysis report, I think what the title of it says. And uh, what I'd just like to do, Tim, if you could just jump to the diagrams, the first group of diagrams that has some numbers on it. Now that's, that's good. Just, yeah, that's good. What we did is we uh, looked at the public right-of-way uh, just east of Experimental Farm in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and then also just north of where the hotel is, sort of in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. And uh, Jason set out uh, two traffic counts, as I've annotated in the report, uh, that collect data for 24 hours in 50-minute time intervals. And uh, from that, we uh, selected the, the peak hour and we use those numbers as depicted up here in the lower left-hand corner. The existing traffic is the numbers that are above the arrow, if you will, uh, and such for the a.m. and p.m. time periods. And we're just looking at the a.m. now. And then, uh, based on the information uh, obtained from the developer, uh, okay, uh, uh, I went into the recognized standard, the ITE, Institute of Transportation Engineering, trip generation tables, which I've mentioned in the reports, uh, and looked at the land uses as applicable 
to the land use intended for this site and came up with the uh, numbers that are in blue, uh, which are really only really visible from below the arrow there. And so then, uh, shall I say, simply added the existing traffic to the new traffic that the site is expected to generate to get the total number of cars that would be out there uh, at the locations uh, depicted. Pretty much the bottom line of all of this is that the, if you look at the PM, you want to go ahead to the next one. Uh, below the arrowhead, uh, going westbound approaching the experimental farm, you'll see a number eight. Inbound off of the experimental farm, you'll see a number eight. Northbound at the hotel, you'll see a number eight. And southbound at the hotel, you'll see a number six. During the peak hours, of the traffic that exists out there now, which is represented. Uh, those numbers, the highest of which is eight vehicles per hour, is the expected additional traffic that the site will generate based on the intended land use using the Institute of Transportation Engineering and Trip Generation Evaluation. So the bottom line of all of this is, when you grind through all these numbers, which is all those numbers that were ahead of this, it comes down to a maximum situation of adding eight vehicles an hour. If you take 60 minutes in an hour divided by eight, it comes out to one car, an average of 7.8 minutes, which not trying to minimize anything and hating to use the word, that's nothing. In the scheme of things, in the world of traffic engineering, eight cars an hour is respectively nothing. Um, so that's the bottom line of all of this, is uh, uh, this particular land use is well fitted for this site. Uh, it's only going to generate a minimalistic amount of additional traffic uh, to that which is already out there using this roadway network system. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, approve it because uh, it's a really good land use for this particular site. Uh, compared to the kinds of things that could be built under the BT zone and the additional traffic that that would generate. So uh, we do have a model. If you want to see it, I'll stop talking. If anybody's got any questions. I think there are some questions. Um, did you take, in your analysis, did you take into consideration the number of, of, of residents that may have cars on the property as well as the number of employees in the uh, structure itself? The way that is handled in the profession and the way it's handled in the Institute of Transportation Engineering trip generation tables, all of those things, including delivery vehicles um, and the little blips that were uh, also included in the report that explained for each of the specific land uses what all of that took into account, uh, they actually take that into account as far as employees for the number of uh, dwelling units, if you will, that are included in there. Uh, it takes into account all the delivery vehicles. It takes into account all of the activities that would be going to and from the site uh, for that specific kind of definition of land use. So the short version of that is it's all taken into account. Uh, I want to personally thank you for straightening out the circle. Oh. <laughs> uh, There's more things I'd like to do. <laughs> the, uh, any other questions of Mr. Oaks? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we had a brief discussion yesterday about the fact that your analysis used the public part of the of town town road, uh, but did not look at the private section closer to West Main Street. Can you remind me and then the committee why that was and what your thinking is regarding that section? And, and any impact that this development would have on that section? Uh, there's two ways we can handle this. Uh, I did, and I'm going to use this unprofessional term, conjure up some traffic down at the traffic signal at uh, 41 and the traffic signal at the Shell Station there, and also the internal T intersection. And um, this was based on field observations that I've personally done 
yesterday morning and uh, last evening uh, during the peak traffic times uh, as depicted. And um, so we do have that set up in a model uh, based on those uh, traffic manipulated <coughs> based on the traffic, uh, the 34,000 plus vehicles a day that's using uh, State Route 41 out there and assigning that traffic uh, using Ohio Department of Transportation general <coughs> assumptions for design hours and things like that. And then based on my personal observations at the internal T intersection, as well as the traffic signal, um, I'll say it this way, I manipulated the numbers to be representative of that which I saw out there in the field. And so then I modeled that <coughs> using a micro model that actually moves little cars around like little ants on picture so that you can actually see and then um, changed or added eight vehicles an hour on the move, on the uh, movements that would be included at that internal T intersection and also at the existing traffic signal on Route 41 by the shell station. And uh, the model does as good as it can. Okay? It's the recognized standard, actually pretty much throughout the United States. And it, uh, once again, eight vehicles an hour in the scheme of things is minuscule. And we have that here available if uh, you want to see that. Is that where you, where you want yeah, to go with that, Patrick? Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, a little earlier that you're looking at one car every seven and a half minutes, uh, that it was minimal, if any, if no impact. I just want to make sure that that same recommendation that same uh, conclusion you can draw when you bring in that that other area the private area of the roadway and it sounds like you're saying yes that's Correct. consistent yeah. that was what was intuitively clear to me uh, because of quote unquote only eight vehicles per hour but then when i overlaid that number on the model and looked specifically at the model down at that uh, the shell station at the traffic signal and the internal t intersection it just reinforced that professional opinion. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy to show that to you. We don't have to collect around the counter if you don't have a way of hooking it into your nice screen up here to see that if you want to do that. I'm, I have it with me. It's all cranked up and ready to go. Okay. Appreciate that. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Oaks? Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any questions, just no. Okay. Uh, any other items for staff on this issue? For the first action that needs to be taken on this issue is to whether or not we want to have a public hearing. What is the uh, desire of the commission? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Um, we are not required to have a uh, public hearing here, but there will definitely have to be one at the council level, so there will be a public hearing. Correct. At least one. Mm -hmm. I, I I would recommend that we not hold a public hearing. And is that a motion? Mo that is a motion. Thank you. Is there support for that motion? Second motion. Mr. McGarry seconded the motion. Please call the roll. Mayor. Yes. Mrs. Mayhan. Yes. Mr. Forrest. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Tetherington. Yes. Cappers. Yes. Motion is passed. The Planning Commission will not hold a public hearing. Okay, next. Um, we are to make a recommendation, not make a recommendation, a further table, whatever you want to do, on the requested rezoning request, taking into consideration the traffic impact study we just heard and the protective covenants, restrictions, and agreements that were submitted to us or as amended. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, may I say something? I don't have any problem with that. Let's make it quick. Okay. Thank you very much. Did you pause the... Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, if you would, please. Name and address, please. Alex Kovadesh, Arson Investments, uh, 2305 Bar Hills Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 45419. Okay. I just wanted one, one moment to address, because I, Mark Murphy had asked me as the seller to, to be here on his behalf. 
and it was simply with the matter of um, the the cladding material of the building, mm -hmm. and I had just spoken to him beforehand, and uh, Mr. Murphy had indicated, as Mr. Davis had said, that he, he's looking to do the stone if possible. The problem is that he doesn't know yet what the pricing of the stone is going to be relative to the brick. And he wanted to be very clear. He didn't want to have an issue of, mis of miscommunication down the line where he would like to do the stone, but if the pricing is cost prohibitive, he would do the brick, which I, which I thought, we always want something that's very nice in our developments. And I saw both models. I saw this, the brick model, and it was very nice, and I thought it looked great. But I didn't want anybody to feel like they were being misrepresented, and I, I wanted to make that clear that that's that's his position. Does Mr. Murphy want us to further table this action then until he can do get some pricing there for his No, no, he, he didn't want to table it. He, he thought that, and I agree with him that the brick model looked great, and the stone model looks great. I didn't think that there was an issue with aesthetics on the stone versus the brick. I didn't know that that was an issue, so I, I, wanted to I think what I'm hearing from the commission is that they'd rather have the stone, unless I'm hearing it wrong. Is that in here? Something about here. Let's see. Well, I, I'll share my opinion. I, the more, the the less siding, the better. Stone would be my first choice, as high up as it can go. Brick would be the, my second choice. Certainly, either option in the renderings are attractive. Uh, so, you know, if we're looking at, let's call them A, B, and C on attachment A, uh, C, B, and then A would be my and, order of priority. And I don't think Mr. Murphy has any problem committing to the stone or the brick, and he actually prefers the stone. I just wanted to make it clear, you know, on the percentages that he has, I don't think he has any problem saying that it would be a percentage of stone or a percentage of brick, but he just doesn't know whether stone or brick, one of those two. Does that make sense? And especially since the rest of our development, we had always thought that it was going to be brick because the rest of our development is in the brick, with the park corner north, the other buildings are either ethos or brick. And we actually always thought that the brick would be a, a very nice complement to the overall development. Mm -hmm. And then when the stone came up, it was like, yeah, that would be nice also. But the issue is simply that I didn't want to have anybody misrepresented here. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I think if, I think once it goes to council, by the time it goes to council, we really need to know, or Which they, the council be? really needs to know before they make a decision. Um, I, I have no problems with the covenants, however they want to be worded at this point, at least as a recommendation, either being uh, B or C, because both of them appear to have the same percentage of uh, non-siding material, either brick or stone, as a percentage of the elevation. So basically you're saying that you would like to have the, the C elevation, but it can be composed of either brick or stone facing. Sure, if that makes it easier, yeah. yeah. Both can be. Anybody else have an issue with that? Okay. Well, once again, we need to uh, make a recommendation to City Council concerning this issue. Does uh, the Commission have any action they want to undertake? Um, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chairman? Um, I'll make the motion that we recommend to Council uh, the development uh, with the condition that the covenants and restrictions um, are amended uh, pursuant to our discussions specifically, uh, most specifically, I guess, if that's a, a phrase, uh, Mr. Capper's uh, language, if he would be so kind to share it with staff and, and the developer. Is there support for that motion? I'll support that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Titterington? Yes. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mayor? Yes. The motion is passed, unanimous vote. Okay. Mr. Davis, I'll get with you to go ahead and go over uh, the changes if you hadn't been taking notes. 
I try to write down as fast I'll be as happy I to do that. Or if you want, if you wrote some things down, then get me a draft and I'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, does staff have anything else to, to come before the commission? I have nothing further. Thank you. Does the commission have anything they want to discuss? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mrs. Johnson moved to adjourn. Mrs. Mayhan seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Stand adjourned.